another lesson from history. Much could be said about any one of these characters. Uh, John Wesley is famous in our history. Uh, most historians would credit him and his preaching uh, uh, with saving Britain from the French-style revolution. Of course, we had our peasants' revolts, we had Peterloo riots, we had our problems. But John Wesley preached the gospel in this country. I was, a couple of years ago, in the Czech Republic, uh, singing uh, choruses in an outreach in a northern city, and the local townsfolk were walking past, laughing their heads off, thinking, this is completely cuckoo. And I took the microphone with an interpreter and said, um, you may not know, but I am from uh, England, and I am indebted to you people here in the north of uh, Bohemia because of John Huss, because of the one who helped to uh, create the Czech language. Uh, Jan Hus stood against the tyranny of Rome. He was promised safe passage to Constance where uh, the promise was breached and he was burnt at the stake. His followers were hounded out of the Czech Republic uh, over the northern border to uh, the estate of Count von Zinzendorf and they became the Moravian community and, and spread missions across the world, even as far as America, uh, where John Wesley himself used to travel as a missionary. And on a return journey where over the Atlantic the ship was sinking, John Wesley realised that he didn't have an assurance of salvation himself. And he heard in the hold of the ship Moravians, people from this little country in a faraway place of which we know little, the Moravians were singing simple songs and they turned the heart of John Wesley and at Aldersgate he, he felt strangely warmed and the Spirit of God entered that man and he became a powerful anointed preacher and just to illustrate the preaching is, is not just some esoteric um, theoretical theology that people can sit uh, uh, as though they're in the pew listening to a homily and say, well, that was so nice, and now I'll go back and, and, and finish cooking my dinner on a Sunday afternoon. He challenged injustice in society. He challenged uh, people to live holy lives and not always to blame others for their plight. He transformed the moral and social landscape of Britain. And so I was able to say to these folks in that northern town, which I can't remember, in the Czech Republic a couple of years ago, that I'm deeply indebted to you for the Moravian people, for your people going to America and meeting with John Wesley, having faith even though their ship was sinking in a storm, to praise God and to honour him because they had a future beyond this life. And I ended by saying, don't despise the simple singing of songs. John Wesley was a man without compromise, accompanied by his wonderful brother, Charles, from whom we have hundreds and hundreds of wonderful hymns um, with deep theolo theological truth, deep biblical truth, which uh, are, cannot be equaled by um, any other writer so far, although Graham Kendrick's done quite a good job. And um, John Wesley worked alongside the Moravians. They, they had what they call a holiness movement. The Moravians had chapels around the UK. And, and the lesson from history is this. Of course, give credit to one man. Of course, give credit to a life that has been devoted to serving God, riding around on his horse around the country but recognise that there were others alongside him. There was George Whitfield, the great, dynamic, Calvinistic preacher. Uh, there was um, John Senek, a Moravian himself, a, a, a surveyor who built um, some wonderful churches, if you go into the West Country, still standing. Give credit to those who went alongside him, but give credit to the Holy Spirit that inspired him. He wouldn't want us to be venerating him as a man. He'd want us to point as he would point to the one above and say repent and believe.